Am I good to go? This is good to go? All right. Uh, okay, so on the count of three, I want you to shout out your favorite ice cream flavor. All right? One, two, three. You didn't say something. You just looked down and you tried to make look away from me. You're going to participate the next one, okay? On the count of three, I want you to shout out your favorite movie. Okay? One, two, three. I don't know what you said, but I think it was a good movie. On the count of three, you're going to dig deep on this one. All right? I want you to think back to when you were 16. I want you to shout out the name of your 16-year-old heartthrob. Celebrity or non-celebrity. Think about this one, okay? You can only say it once, all right? On the count of three. One, two, three. What'd you say? I'm not I, saying it out I, loud. You just, <laughs> all right, now we're, now we're a little warmed up, okay? Uh, according to the 2010 Youth Vital Signs Report, youth gave the category of youth voice a C grade, the lowest of all categories. I need my clicker. That's the lowest of all categories. I work for an organization called Youth Central. Our mission is to engage, inspire, and celebrate young people through community participation. Those are a lot of big words, but at the end of the day, we want to give youth a voice. And we do this through meaningful opportunities in the community, steering committee-based opportunities, such as the Mayor's Youth Council or the Youth of Distinction Awards. One program I want to talk more about today is called the Youth Volunteer Corps, YVC. On one hand, YVC will go out to schools and will recruit youth volunteers. We present to them the way we would want to be presented to when we were growing up. On the other side, we go out to communities, event organizers, festival organizers, uh, nonprofit organizations, and we recruit volunteer events, right? I mean uh, community events that will look for volunteers. And we want to bring youth volunteers to those events. It's the perfect marriage. Last year, we had 2,500 youth participate in 767 different events and contribute over 35,000 hours to the community. That makes Calgary the largest YVC site in North America. All right? So the question is, isn't uh, uh, how do we get youth to volunteer? They already volunteer. According to Volunteer Calgary, 71% of youth between the ages of 12 and 18 will volunteer once in the next year. So we don't have to ask that question. The bigger question is, how do we get them engaged in our community? How do we get them thinking to that next level? How do we involve them? Right? I could talk all day about marketing to youth. I could talk all day about creating youth-friendly spaces and creating a youth-friendly organization. But there's one thing that all, all organizations and all of people in our society must do in order for us to properly engage youth. I want to tell you a story. It's my story. I grew up, uh, to quote Chris Jericho, my favorite wrestler, I grew up in the mean streets of Calgary, specifically the Northeast, all right? <laughs> and I'm proud to have grown up in the Northeast. I love it there. And growing up, I never felt like I was part of a community, like I knew where I lived, but I didn't know my role. When I hit high school, I hated that question, what do you want to do when you grow up? I hate that question, I cringe, I don't know how to answer that. I don't know how to answer that question now, let alone when I was 16. I didn't volunteer. My school had this mandatory 20 hours of volunteering in order to graduate, and I faked it, I lied about it. Something about being voluntold didn't sit right with me. I was more interested in three things growing up, in high school specifically. Can you tell me what they were? Wrestling, Wrestling would have been one, but it's not the top three. Okay, what was it, girls? Yeah, I wanted girls. Yeah, I did, okay, what else? Yeah, I wanted a car. Uh, rock and roll. <laughs> I was from the Northeast. I, wa I wanted a red 1999 Honda Civic. With a, with a big spoiler, right? Nice exhaust, 12 inch subwoofers in the back. And what's the last thing I needed? Money. I needed cash, money to get all this stuff, all right? I needed to take my ladies out, okay? <laughs> I was more interested in that than doing anything else. I didn't want to volunteer, I didn't see the benefit in it. My friends and I, we were an outgoing group. We would always play pranks in the hallways. We would wrestle in the hallways. 
We would always cause problems for my teachers, especially my drama teacher. That was my favorite class. It was the only class I could ever connect to. The reason why I connected to it was because I could go there and, and, and play in scenes and be in, sh in short plays. I could write them. I would write stories about being a cop or like a ninja or a ninja cop, all those together. <laughs> and after so many pranks in class, after, after finding a pile of plywood and making wrestling tables so we could throw our friends through them, because that's what Stone Cold Steve Austin was doing, my drama teacher finally said to me, you need to go volunteer, specifically at the Loose Moose Theater Company. I had no clue what she was talking about. I asked her, what is this place? She said, you'll see. So I get in my Honda Civic, yes, I got it, and I drove out to Inglewood, and I go to this theater. You know those moments that change your lives? I think everyone has that. A lot of people in this room will have it. This is the moment that changed my life. I watched that first show, and for those who don't know, the Loose Moose Theater is an improv company. I watched that first show and my mind was blown, all right? I, I ran, after the show, I ran up to the front and I said, how do I get up on stage? I want to go to there, to quote Liz Lemon from 30 Rock, all right? <laughs> and they said, well, if you wanna get up on stage, you should take the classes. Volunteers take the classes for free. I signed up immediately. I got volunteering, I was ripping tickets, I was taking the classes and getting up on stage, the feeling was indescribable. For the first time, I was actually someone. This theater welcomed me with open arms. I wasn't a punk kid, I wasn't a teenager, I was a member. I felt like I was actually someone. They treated me like a human being. And the older performers, rather than looking down at me, they elevated me, they became my mentors. They supported me along the way, and a lot of them are mentors to me today. Now, the moment I knew my role in the community is right here. This is a scary image. Uh, <laughs> I'm Cinderella's evil stepsister in this, in this show. And this one particular scene, I go up to Cinderella, and I'm like, you get Cinderella. I go, Cinderella, what's your most favorite toy? Cinderella says, it's a stuffed animal right here. Cinderella, can I play with that toy? Cinderella says, no. Cinderella, we are sisters, and don't sisters share? Cinderella reluctantly gives me a stuffed animal. I look at the front row of girls. They've all dressed up for the show. I eye one of them down and rip the head off and laugh. <laughs> and they stand up and say, I hate you! You're a terrible person! Now, my role was being an actor, not to make children cry, okay, but to make them laugh, to make them cry, to make them angry, to make them sad. That was my role, to be an actor, to make people feel something. And 10 years later, I've added on to that role. But for the first time ever in my life, I was something. I wasn't this kid wandering around. I was finally a person with a role in the community. What the Loose Moose Theater taught me, and what we're doing at Youth Central, is that to engage young people, you must respect them, treat them like equals, but be willing to support them and mentor them along the way. At Youth Central, when a young person walks into our organization, they're not just a kid. They're a member of the organization. We engage them in every level of that place. Right? Now, I say we need to treat them like equals. If we can treat them like equals, we will move forward as a society. We will move forward as a community. There are three options. The first one is organizations, community, treating youth without respect. Examples of this are having a volunteer project where the youth pick up garbage and the adults run fun carnival games. Another one is creating a youth engagement committee and not letting youth sit on the committee because you don't want to change the meeting time to after school. Another one is requesting youth volunteers on the morning of a school day. That doesn't make sense. On the other side, there's situations where we give youth a lot of respect, but help, do not hold them accountable and do not support them. That includes creating a youth council and letting them do whatever they want, giving them no clear goals and not, um, not holding them accountable at what they do. Another example is giving youth grant money and not supporting them and not mentoring them because we don't want to interrupt the process of being a young person. The truth is, those youth who are made to pick up garbage, while the adults do fun things, they don't feel valued. And the young person who's given grant money but isn't helped, isn't supported, feels frustrated. We need to change that. All right? 
Working together, treating them like equals, is when the youth and adults volunteer together. We shouldn't separate the tasks. Supporting a young person is working with that young person who has the grant money and helping them develop a business plan. Teaching them, helping them grow along the way, and letting them leave when they're done. All right? To move forward as a society, we need to engage them. This is an exciting time in our community. All right? There are conversations happening all over the world. Technology has changed the way we communicate with people. Everyone we know is at our fingertips. I imagine in this room right now, everyone is connected on Facebook, okay? We need to utilize that. Young people, they want to help and they want to be heard, but we need to hear them. We need to properly engage them, connect them to the organization, the cause, and most importantly, the people. And it starts with respect. Thank you.